Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, The Bistro, where we will discuss today's hottest consumer trends, predict the future with consumer experts, and learn how elite businesses and entrepreneurs continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. Hello and welcome to The Bistro. Thank you for joining us. For the Better Business Bureau, I'm your host, Elena Spinola. Every year, starting in January, people start to think about preparing their taxes. However, this year, in 2017, most of us were following the news to find out if a new tax reform bill would be passed, and if so, how would it affect us? In what is being called the most substantive rewriting of the federal tax code in 10 years, we are now dealing with some significant changes as a result of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act legislation that we need to educate ourselves about. Today, we welcome back Morris Schaus, Managing Partner of Washington Wealth Advisors, to walk us through the details of the new tax reform and offer some very helpful advice as we prepare to file our taxes in 2018. Thank you for coming back to the Beast Show today, Maura. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Well, this I know is going to be very, very helpful. I, As I'm online and talking with friends, everyone has questions now about this tax reform and filing their taxes. So let's just get started here. As individual taxpayers, what impacts and effects should we expect from this new tax reform? Well, there are a lot of changes that will impact taxpayers, most of which will sunset or revert back to pre-existing law in 2025. So let's maybe get started with individual taxpayers, like you said, in their tax brackets. There are still seven brackets for taxpayers, but some of these brackets are now lower. So prior to the new legislation, individual tax brackets ranged from 10% to 39.6%. Following tax reform, the brackets now go from 10% to 37%. So for example, someone paying 39.6% in 2017 will drop to 37% in 2018. Okay. And one piece, Elaine, just to add to that, what a lot of people are looking forward to is that fewer taxpayers are expected to have to pay that dreaded alternative minimum tax, also known as AMT. Under the new legislation, the exemption will be raised from about 164,000 for couples to 1 million and from about 123,000 for single filers to 500,000. So some big changes here. Yes, big changes. And I know a big part of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act legislation also has to do with corporate tax rates. Can you tell us about the impact of that? Yes, you are correct. On the corporate side, we saw a significant change where the top corporate rate of 35% was reduced to 21%. And contrary to the individual rates, which I mentioned sunset back uh, in 2025, the corporate tax rate provision was made permanent. Okay, interesting. So let's hope that some of that corporate tax savings trickles down to our listeners. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, now going back to the individual side, what are some of the provisions regarding deductions and exemptions? Sure. So the standard deduction has essentially doubled, which is great for those taxpayers who don't itemize but rather use that standard deduction. Right now, by the way, it's estimated that about 70% of taxpayers use the standard deduction. So for single filers, the standard deduction has increased from $6,360 to $12,000. And for couples who elect to file married filing jointly, it has increased from $12,700 to $24,000. The additional standard deductions for the elderly and blind were protected and are still available, but personal exemptions are gone, at least, again, until 2025. Okay, so that's a big change. Personal exemptions are gone. Yes. Okay. So now for those taxpayers, those other 30% who don't use the standard deduction but they itemize, How does the reform affect their itemized deductions? Sure. So we can start by taking a look at how homeowners will be affected via their mortgages and home equity loans. On the mortgage interest front, the good news is that current homeowners are grandfathered here, so all their mortgage interest is still deductible. But those purchasing a new home will only be allowed to deduct $750,000 of their mortgage debt. Prior to the reform, it was a million. So that's a significant change there. Yes. Okay. So these are some big changes that will definitely affect many people. Is there anything else we need to know about on the homeowner front? Sure. State and local taxes. Some refer to this as SALT, the SALT deduction. Under the new tax act, 
the state and local tax deduction now has a cap of $10,000. Prior to this, it was unlimited, which really helped people in high income and high tax states like California and New York. Individuals were allowed to deduct all of their state and local property taxes plus income or sales tax. So another big change here. Yes. And so I'd imagine that this not only affects how people are filing, but how they plan their tax planning moving forward, correct? Absolutely. Okay. So uh, didn't some taxpayers try to prepay for their property taxes prior to the 1231 cutoff? And, And what happens now? They did. Um, But the IRS came out with guidance, which was a little late for some. And the guidance indicated that these prepayments can only be deductible if the tax was already assessed. So what this means is that the local authority would have had to have already told the taxpayer how much they will owe in property taxes for 2018. So we're thinking a lot of those prepayments may not be eligible to be deductible. Wow. And so real quick, more, how will people understand? I mean, they really need to speak with someone if, you know, to understand what they have prepaid for, what what's now eligible. I mean, they need to really understand what they've done and who to talk to and then how to file. They do. Yes. Yeah. You know, especially not so much for 2017. It'll be similar to 2016, but going forward to plan for 2018. Gotcha. So yes, that can definitely be frustrating, again, for those who took the time to try and get ahead. Uh, what other impact to itemized deductions should we expect? Sure, yes. We have a few more that would be great if we can just quickly touch on. Sure. Um, Casualty losses. So taxpayers can now, starting in 2018, only take a deduction for casualty losses if the loss is attributable to a federally declared disaster, kind of like Hurricane Harvey. Sure. Um, Another popular itemized deduction is charitable contributions. The Tax Act increases the income-based percentage limit for charitable contributions of cash to public charities, and it's increased to 60%. Just a couple more medical expenses. With the new legislation, the individual mandate is dropped starting in 2019. So that's one that has a little bit of a delay. However, effective in 2018, the threshold for the deduction of medical expenses is reduced to 7.5% of AGI, adjusted gross income, Mm -hmm. from the 10% previously. And then last but not least, there's a few miscellaneous deductions that are going away. So you can no longer, starting in 2018, deduct things like the cost of tax preparation, investment fees, um, reimbursed job expenses, and moving expenses. So some people will definitely feel a little pain here. Yes, I would think so. And just I just want to add in one more quick note that the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act did preserve the $250 deduction educators can take for spending their own money on classroom supplies, which yeah, is good. That is good to know. That is good to hear. Has the reform impacted in any way the forms we need to file our taxes with? And as a reminder, can you just share what those forms are? Sure. So as we're still wrapping up 2017 taxes that are due in April, we have not seen any impact at this point. In a few weeks, everyone should start looking for forms similar to what they received for 2016. And that would include things like your W-2 form from your employer. Uh, If you have interest, dividends, or capital gains, definitely keep an eye out for your 1099, uh, the 1098-T for education costs. And if you own a home, you'll need to look for your mortgage tax statement showing the interest to deduct, as well as your escrow statement showing the property taxes that were paid for 2017. And it's also a good idea to gather things like your 529 plan contributions and anything else you think might impact your taxes for 2017. Okay, a helpful list. Thank you for that. And, uh, you know, now that 2017 is over and we're into a new year in 2018, what are some of the things that can still be done to impact how much we owe the IRS? You can still make IRA contributions up to the tax filing deadline. So this includes traditional IRA and Roth IRA contributions. And if you are a business owner, you can open and fund a SEP up until October 16th of 2018, which is the final filing deadline with extensions. Okay. Now, how difficult are these things to do? I mean, you know, everyone has so much going on in their lives. It's a busy time. What is the easiest way to go about this? The good thing is that most IRAs and SEP IRAs 
are easy to open. They can be open online, and you can just link your bank account to fund them. What we really caution uh, our clients with is to be careful with their timing. We advise it's wise to act earlier if you choose to go this route to make sure that everything is in place by April 18th. Okay, thank you for that. Now, how do you see tax reform impacting the way people invest their money with you, for example, at Washington Wealth Advisors or with their financial advisor? A few areas. As we head into 2018, some clients will have a little more in their paychecks, so we'll certainly be discussing the best way to save a portion of that money. 529 plans have become more flexible. You can now use them for education expenses for grades K through 12, whereas prior to the Tax Act, they were only eligible to be used for college. So this is a great planning tool for people. I am I'm, I'm very happy to hear this one. Good. Cool. Yeah. Um, we may end up looking more closely at things like donor-advised funds to help our clients who are more charitably inclined to maximize their charitable deductions. And dividends for clients whose money we manage that are taxed at ordinary income tax rates, we're expecting those to drop a little, um, the tax on those to drop a little for clients whose tax bracket will drop. Okay. So in summary, what we're doing is we're really focusing on educating our clients on the impact to them. And we'll definitely be changing some strategies with the goal of helping them to take advantage of this tax reform. Sure. I mean, it, it just sounds very important to me to to get with a financial advisor because there are so many changes and there are so many smart ways that we can work with our money to, to, to do the best for our families. And if you're just not aware or you're not working with someone and you don't know, then, you know, you really might miss out on some of these great things like the 529 and, and other things. Definitely. So, Maura, remind me, when will people begin to see the impact of these changes? Sure. So some will start to see a little bit more in their paychecks in February of 2018, so next month. But most won't see an impact until they actually file their taxes in April of 2019. Okay. So for this year, everything kind of remains similar to the way they filed last year. That is correct. really for the next year. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Is there anything else that you're telling people to do today so they can see the benefits of a tax reform? So at this point, like I said, we really want people to get educated on the Jobs and Tax Cuts Act, like you are by listening to this podcast. Um, So get educated, consider the impact to you, and like Elaine, like you said, create a plan that will allow you to potentially benefit from these changes. Okay, thank you so much. Where can our listeners go to learn more about how the tax planning uh, impacts them? Yes. Um, The IRS website is always a great tool because it has up-to-date information on any changes. And they're welcome to check out our website as well. Okay. Uh, And what is that website? Tell us one more time. Sure. It's WashingtonWealthADV.com. Excellent. Okay. And lastly, this is a big one. Can you (laughs) remind our listeners of the tax filing deadline for 2017? Yes. Uh, It's Tuesday, April 18th. Okay. Maura, thank you so much for joining us today on The Bistro. Just like last time, you are a wealth of knowledge to all of us. Um, Tell us one more time your website at Washington Wealth Advisors. Yes. it's um, Thanks again for having me. And our website is www.WashingtonWealthADV.com. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. This has been personally helpful to me, and I know it's going to be helpful to so many people listening. Great. I hope so. Thanks, Elaine. Sure. The Better Business Bureau is deeply committed to building and advancing a better marketplace, a trusted marketplace for all because trust always matters. For the Better Business Bureau, I'm Elena Spinola, host of the Bistro Podcast. Until next time, it has been my pleasure discussing better business and the new tax reform with you. You just enjoyed the Bistro Podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com and subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service. 